holds venture out on a morning like this, but the sun is shining. The roads are a lot better than what they were earlier this week, so we're all happy about that. Uh, we're now in Lent, uh, the first Sunday in Lent. Um, and of course, you, you may know that during Lent, uh, the 40 days of Lent, we don't count the Sundays in the 40 days. We just count the, the weekdays. So, but we're still in the Lent season. And we don't count the Sundays because the Sundays focus on the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and that's always true on every Sunday. Uh, in the readings today, uh, especially the Gospel, we'll focus on that. Uh, it focuses on the beginning of Jesus' ministry and his announcement about what his ministry was going to be about. So we have that part, and we're at the beginning of Lent, so there's a connection between those. May the Lord bless our worship. Stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The time has come, he said, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. In the large catechism, Martin Luther teaches that baptism remains forever. Even though we fall from it and sin, nevertheless we always have access to it. But we need not again have the water poured over us. Even if we were immersed in water a hundred times, it would nevertheless be only one baptism. And the effect and significance of the one baptism would continue and remain. Repentance, therefore, is nothing less than a return and approach to baptism, to resume and practice what had earlier been begun but abandoned. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, let us draw near to God our Father to repent of our sins and in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ claim again the forgiveness we received in baptism. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called or an ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Almighty and Eternal God, we implore you to direct, sanctify, 
and to govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and in the works of your commandments, that through your mighty protection, both now and ever, we may be preserved in body and in soul through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Old Testament reading for this first Sunday in Lent is Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 to 18. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain that I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut through wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place of God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, the fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your suffering your, and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed me. 
This is the word of the Lord. Psalm is Psalm 25, verses 1 to 10. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful towards those who keep the demands of his covenant. The Psalm. In you, my in you, Lord, my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful towards those who keep the demands of his covenant. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful towards those who keep the demands of His covenant. The epistle for today is found in James chapter 1, verses 12 to 18. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, That person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, It gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. This is the word of the Lord. Being the fact that uh, this last Wednesday was Ash Wednesday, I thought I'd sing a song called Ashes Today by Tom Condry.
give our fish a wider view and The first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The title is, The Time Has Come. From the text verse, which is Mark 1.15, The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Here ends the text. It was a Sunday morning, the congregation was sitting in their seats. Some were chatting with others that were sitting near them. The pre-service music then suddenly stopped, 
and the pastor walked down the center aisle to the front of the sanctuary. Everyone quieted and faced the front. Because, because the time had come to change their focus and activities, to stop what they were doing and start something new, to begin the worship service. Mark 1, verse 9. At that time Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John at the Jordan River. And then after other things happen, we find the text for today found there in that chapter of Mark. Where Jesus announces his breaking news about his kingdom. Verse 15, the time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. It was time to change. Time to change attention, focus, and activities. Refocus motivation to stop what was being done and to make a new start. Begin a new life under a new king under the rule of the Lamb of God. It was time to start living consistently with the Lamb of God in the kingdom of God. There are two ancient Greek words which can be translated time. One is as the time has come. One is chronos, meaning simple chronological time as indicated by seconds, minutes, hours, days, years, and centuries. The other word that can be translated time is kairos, which means the strategic opportunity, the decisive time. Mark used that second word, kairos, when he wrote, the time has come. Jesus is saying, after considering all things on earth and in heaven, past, present, and future, now is the best time, the strategic time for the kingdom of God to come near. It's the time for the Lamb of God, the Messiah, to come. In Isaiah 40, Isaiah had spoken of that, Time, and he called it a time of comfort, a time of sins being paid for, a time of God's glory being revealed, a time of God's promises being fulfilled, a time of God's coming reign, a time when God would give strength to the weary, and a time when all those who put their hope in the Lord would be restored. Now, Jesus was saying that special time has arrived. The time has come. And that means change is in motion. Up until that time, people had been expecting God to send a holy and righteous and powerful leader, a Messiah, who would gather together a powerful nation a kingdom that would conquer and rule over all their enemies on earth. When Jesus announced the time has come, the kingdom of God has come near, it was not the kind of leader nor the kind of kingdom that God's people had expected. And perhaps it's not what some people expect today either. God has his own mysterious times when he chooses to act. And he has his own mysterious ways in the which he carries those out. When we think of kingdom, we usually think about something on earth. A territory with a capital and with a leader that's surrounded by many trappings of power. However, Jesus was not proclaiming that kind of kingdom. The kind of kingdom that you could search for on Google, and find photos and maps. When speaking to Pontius Pilate, Jesus explained 
in John 18. Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now, my kingdom is from another place. Another place, yet God's kingdom existed in the past, it existed in the present, and will continue to exist in the future for eternity. This kingdom has always been and will be forever. God does not change, so this kingdom of God does not change either. However, individuals, groups, nations in the world, all may be changed by God's kingdom and by the one who is in control, Jesus Christ. What ought to be our response to Jesus' announcement? The time has come, the kingdom of God has come near. Jesus says, repent and believe. To repent means make changes. Switch your support, your loyalty, your allegiances, the way you live. No longer believe and trust what you see and hear from the world around you. Those sources are deceiving and will lead you astray. Do not live according to the opinions, the values, and the ways of various small and large groups. All those would-be kingdoms of the world with various different leaders, some powerful, that attract followers. Those enemies of God continually to try to use subtle and not so subtle means to convince us to follow earthly wisdom. They even pretend to be on God's side as they encourage the judging and criticizing and harm of others, others who would seek God's will. And they encourage you to disagree with them. God's enemies are sneaky and trying to keep us away from God, away from his word, away from Jesus and his kingdom. Repent means to change. Change from following the paths that lead away from the kingdom of God. So make U-turns from going down the roads the world tempts us to go down. The Greek word for repent, metanoia, means change your mind. If you change your mind and you think differently, everything else in your life is going to change also. The Hebrew word for repentance is shub, which means to change from the wrong to the right path. Repent is change. The changes we are to make are to be in accord with God's rule. That means we are to be aware of what God desires from us. To learn what that is, we study God's word. Psalm 119, 105 tells us, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. The Bible is that light, and it shows the way on the path to walk with Christ so that we can avoid the highways that lead away from God. Direction changing to go towards the kingdom of God has begun. It began with our baptisms. However, continuous temptations following, followed along after baptism. Therefore, we need to continuously repent. The first of Luther's 95 theses says, when our Lord and Master Jesus Christ said, Repent, He willed the entire life of believers to be one of repentance. The time has come to make ourselves aware of the laws of God's kingdom and to continuously turn towards God's kingdom. But repenting, changing is hard for us. We humans do not like to admit that we're going in the wrong direction. We're proud of ourselves and proud of our decisions and what we do. We don't like to admit that we're at fault or an error in any way. 
and around us the earthly voices all tell us, seriously, do not go in God's direction. We have a better direction for you. To all of these messages instead, Jesus tells us, repent, turn around, and believe the good news. Believe the good news of God's kingdom. Jesus speaks good words to invite us. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. And in John 17, Jesus prayed, the hour has come that your son may give eternal life to all those given to him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. In John 10, he says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. In all that Jesus did, he fulfilled what was written in Isaiah chapter 53. Surely he took our pain and bore our suffering. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. He was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of his people, he was punished. Whatever your sins, those that trouble you and those that do not, Jesus paid the price for all of them. He suffered for them. He suffered for the punishment of them so that they can be forgiven. You can be forgiven and our record be cleared. Because of Jesus, we can repent and we can change direction. In conclusion, the time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. The time has also come for Lent. The 40-day season of Lent, which is a time of repentance and preparation for Easter. And Lent is a good time to think about these matters. Lent is an opportunity for the people of God to rededicate themselves to the kingdom of God and to the hearing of God's word and to respond to Jesus' words to repent. The path that leads to God's kingdom is not provided by the world around us, so turn away from those pathways. To be in the kingdom of God, we need to continually turn around from worldly paths and to turn on the path of faith, which was built by Jesus on the cross in which he was crucified. And then on the third day, he rose from the dead. He is at the right hand of God, and he heads up the kingdom of God. As we at Good Shepherd follow God's kingdom's path through Lent, we will on Wednesdays focus on the places recorded by Luke where Jesus walked as he went to the cross. On Wednesdays, there will be worship at 7 p.m. and Bible class at 4 p.m. Whether or not you can attend on Wednesdays, evenings, any of those activities at 4 or 7, or whether or not you can attend on Sundays at 10, 15, we invite you to apply the words of today's text spoken by Jesus to yourself. Jesus said to you, the time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. In closing, Philippians 4 reminds us, the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Let us now confess our faith according to the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with joy to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. <coughs> The offering plate is placed at the exit. Let us pray. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, for washing away our sins <clears throat> and for promising to be our God forever. As our real life is with Christ, help us to live as members of your kingdom, trusting and serving you and giving ourselves in love to others. We now continue on to the installation of congregational officers for this year. Now, we planned to do this earlier in the year, back in January, but you know what happened with our services and the weather and so forth. So we do that now. I would invite all of you if, as volunteers or as officers, stay in your places and just respond to the, to the prompts. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, these people have accepted positions of leadership. We give you thanks for their willingness to serve. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We rejoice now that these sisters and brothers will assist to lead us in our common life and our mutual mission as a congregation. <coughs> Holy Scripture tells us that the twelve gathered all his disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. You have accepted specific responsibilities, positions of responsibility in the congregation. As such, you are to work with the pastor that life together in Christ may be orderly and pleasing in his sight. You are to see to it that the word of God is purely preached and taught according to the Lutheran confessions and that the sacraments of Christ are administered according to His institution, that provision is made for the Christian instruction of young and old, and that the erring are admonished, and that discipline is maintained. You are to seek to involve all members of the congregation in worship, in learning, in witness, service, and support, so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation in the wider church, in this community, and in the whole world. You are to be faithful in your specific area of serving, that the Spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be examples of faith, active in love, fostering peace, harmony, 
and mutual understanding in this congregation. Now on behalf of your brothers and sisters in Christ, I ask you, will you faithfully carry out the duties which you have accepted, trusting in the Lord and conforming yourself to his word in accordance with the faith of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? Please respond with, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. Good Shepherd congregation. That includes some who are not on the other list. I ask you, will you support those who lead? And will you share in the ministry that Christ has given to all of us who are baptized? Please answer, we will, and we will ask God to help us. It's got to help us. I now declare you to be installed as leaders and officers of this congregation for 2021 in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Almighty and most merciful God enlighten and strengthen you that you may be good stewards of the glory of his name and for the good of his people and direct your days and your deeds in peace. Amen. We move on to recognize that some have served over the years and a couple people are choosing to do other things at this point. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, faithfully over the years, a large number have served our Lord at Good Shepherd. Among these are Calvin Hartman, who has served as a deacon elder in recent years, and David Rodenbaugh, who has served on the Board of Properties for several years. Hear what Holy Scriptures has to say about all those who do serve in the church. I thank my God every time I remember you and all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, he who began a good work in you will carry it on to the completion of the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about for all of you, since I have you in my heart, and whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And that was from Philippians chapter 1. We continue with the prayers of the church. Heavenly Father, as we enter this Lenten season of repentance and renewal, we pray that you would remember us according to your steadfast love and goodness in Christ, and instruct and lead us by your Spirit in your ways so that we may repent and believe the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you place the wood of the cross on the back of your only begotten Son, that as the promised offspring of Abraham, he might overcome the gates of hell. Bless, we pray, his church and all those who are called to preach and teach within her with the certainty that those gates cannot prevail against him. And in faith they may boldly trample every power of the enemy underfoot. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, you have given your people gifts and direct their use and service to you and others. Receive our thanks and praise for the leaders that you have provided and for the faithful service that has been begun and completed. Bless past and current leaders with wisdom and patience, love of and faithfulness to your word, that the Good Shepherd congregation may continue to serve you with gladness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of lights, from whom every good and perfect lift, gift comes down to us from above, keep us from being enticed by our own desires to misuse your gifts in sin, and help us to use them rightly in service to you and our neighbor. Bless all our leaders, that we may be governed wisely and justly for the good of this present generation and for all those to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Most high God, our refuge in every trouble, your promise to hear when we call to you. We ask for your comfort and aid for all those impacted by weather, disease, and other calamity. We also pray that you would command your angels to guard our brothers and sisters, especially Margie Carver, Mary Davis, Cindy Edwards, Pastor Judy Gremmel, Dylan Hetty, Evan Leisure, Renee's friend, Sarah, Charlotte Crockett, and Lori Wilson, and all those who suffer in our midst. Keep them from every evil that can befall the body, mind, and soul. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Father, we ask that you provide David Carmen and Becky Fouts all their needs as they celebrate their birthdays on Saturdays. Teach us, along with them, to be ever grateful for all your blessings and to show our gratitude with holy living. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, the time is fulfilled, and your kingdom is at hand as your beloved Son comes to us here at the altar. By your Spirit, grant that we may receive him in repentance and believe the gospel proclaimed to us in his body and given in his blood shed for us. Lord, in your mercy. Prayer. Lord God, we remember with thanksgiving those before us whom you have brought forth by the word of truth who now live and reign in your presence with your Son, as you also have brought us forth by that word in baptism. We pray that you would bring us to full maturity by your word, that we too may be gathered with them to your Son on the day of the glorious harvest of the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.